Deep under the surface of the Hainan Island, the Chinese Navy is building the world's first underground submarine base. While the US Navy is still supplying and deploying its nuclear fleet in the open, China, now the world's second largest military spender, will soon be able to operate its submarines in total secrecy. Meantime, in Beijing, behind closed doors, the nine-member Politburo chose a new chairman of the Communist Party, the new Chinese head of state. There were no other candidates, no other parties, and no presidential debates. Whether he'll be effective or not, there are no impeachment articles. There's no Congress or Parliament to uphold or deny his decisions. History has known many totalitarian governments, but none has ever ruled over the second largest economic power or over the most populous country on Earth. Today, the world cringes as the nine men of Beijing are about to unleash their economic and military power in the decades to come. But did it have to be this way? At what point did China turn to Marxist-Leninist totalitarian rule? About a hundred years ago, the Middle Kingdom seemed to be on the path of becoming a proper republic. Fluent in English, its founder, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, was touring the United States, not Russia, in order to raise funds for a new democratic China. His friend and mentor was not Lenin or Trotsky, but an American missionary. Dr. Charles Hager, who even baptized him as a Christian. At the start of the 20th century, China had no better friend in the world than the United States, which was educating more Chinese exchange students than all other countries combined. In the meantime, the Russian presence in the Middle Kingdom was no more than one Eastern Orthodox Church on the outskirts of Beijing. Yet, by 1949, America, now the leader of the free world, had lost China to the forces of dictatorship and despotism. This film will investigate the events that turned China from the most promising American friend in Asia into one of its fiercest foes 